What a nice Chuckies. I'm Zena Damus. I'm here with. Q. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm thinking about coffee, man. I don't have coffee. And hey, we got Michelle over at the editor station. Hey, guys. All right. Throw that, throw that, throw that editor cam up. Look, I actually fixed the editor cam. Mm-hmm. So now y'all can see the, uh, the editor. Look at her glow. It's the window that's in front of me. Uh, yeah, the sun's still hitting it just right. Oh, Is it? I have to. I have to do that something about that. Brace on. Do something about that. Huh? <laughs> no, what the? <laughs> so anyway, shut your yeah, mouth. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know what we're talking about anymore. Uh, I mean, we've 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 got we've got a list. Like, oh, yeah, but I've been honestly, it. I mean. News has once again been very slack. Um, well, bad news has been coming for us that have been eagerly awaiting certain things. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but yeah. No good well, news. let's let's talk about that a little well, bit. Let's talk about that. News, one good news, you know, the thing that got canceled. That, that's good news. <laughs> let's let's talk about Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Uh, oh, right into the bad news, man. Just rip the band aid off. Yeah, I mean, might as well, you know. Yeah, dang it. Well, okay. I also figure this is going to be the one that, uh, you know. <sighs> I mean, it's sad, but also at the same time. So, Cyberpunk 2077 has postponed its release date to September 17th. Now, From it was originally it was originally April 16th. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this I, I was I was telling somebody somebody else that uh, sent me this, and I, of course I'd already known about it at the time because this is one of the topics that I I keep very close watch on, but. I'd rather see a quality, good game. Um, yeah, but I mean, that's kind of the side stuff you have there too. I mean, they apparently are pushing Mad Crunch. Oh yeah, and no, I, no. And I do a... hate to hear that. I, I honestly go like, well, if that's the case, guys, I can wait to twenty twenty one if it means you don't kill your. Dad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. They push back to se- September seventeenth, and they're going into Crunch. Uh, don't forget, these guys got a lot of flack about Witcher Three, where they ran their people dogged, and it was kind of a whole yeah. incident. So I'm glad they at least pushed it back. But did they push it back enough? If they're saying there's going to be Crunch, like you said, I want a good game when it comes out. Mm-hmm. A and B. I don't want blood in the water. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want blood no, in the you, water to get it. So, while I'm sad, take all the time you need, CD Projekt Red. Really. We'll live. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll make it. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's one of those things where, I mean, I don't want to have to wait too long, though, you know? <laughs> Well, you don't want your you don't want your system to be outdated by the time the game well, comes out. Well, if that's the know? case, then you got to be willing to get a little bit of a Bethesda treatment then, and get a game that may have to be patched a yeah. little bit. If you can deal with that, that's fine. But I mean, but I, don't force too much yeah. crunch. I'm standing by that. No, I, I don't agree. Don't want I it agree. to cost a crazy crunch. But I mean, there's there there is a balance of, you know, would you rather do it episodic? Because you want to know what's annoying to me. Oh, no, why no. You don't have that, well, we don't have that pulled up. They pushed back Final Fantasy VII, and they're doing that crap only one chapter at a time. You couldn't get out one damn chapter on time? <laughs> this does not look well to me. Yeah, I'm well, having Kingdom Hearts 3 flashbacks, Which I, which I think the pushback of Final <laughs> Fantasy actually happened, I think, last week. And then this uh, this followed it up. I know. This pushback is killing me because I had a bunch of games lined up to land. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, all right, I guess... Uh, I guess we'll keep riding this game pass, man. Well, I mean, we're still supposedly getting Doom Eternal in March. I haven't I haven't heard anything yet. I may have to get it at this point um, to have something to do because I need to hurt something. <laughs> and I'm tired of modding Skyrim and Fallout 4. I need something to hurt somebody on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I jumped back into Path of Exile. It's had several updates. It's supposed to have like three more updates this year. And then uh, I think next year Path of Exile 2 comes out. So... I was sort of getting back into it, waiting for uh, Path of Exile 2 next year. I'm such a jerk because I want to play Path of Exile, but they pissed me off that they uh, character locked the Necromancer to where I can't make Mortis. Like, you have to play, I think, a witch to go into the Necromancy Path, and I'm, that's not, I really want to play Mortis. And oh, like that. oh, you're talking about the, 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 the gender lock? Uh, it's just a gender yeah. lock as much as it's even a class lock. Like... I like making an original character. You know Mortis. Yeah. He's my favorite necromancer. And I can't well, make Mortis. That's that Diablo-esque type uh, game. I mean, it wasn't... I think, what? Diablo 3 was the first one 
to let you actually choose the gender of your of your characters um i just they've like always the- done that that character lock where it's like okay well you know this is uh this is a male character this is a female character and uh deal with it you know so he says the marvel game got pushed back too yeah i mean it's been uh i don't know if it's good what marvel bad. game got pushed back uh, uh, i think it was one of the, the one where you uh the one that was gonna have miss marvel in it that i was uh, saying was gonna be trash oh uh, <laughs> But um, Marcel game, Marcel. Oh, who's Marcel? Oh, <laughs> hey, who's Marcel? Oh, uh, sorry, we're, we're messing with our editor. She was she was typing in some stuff, and Marcel sounds like her type, though. Yeah, um, <laughs> Marcel. See, see, she like a Marcel. I know. Anyway, <laughs> you know, I mean, games games get pushed back. Like I've almost gotten to the point though where you see a release date for a game, and you just. Yeah, you, you just assume it's going to get pushed back at least once. Well, apparently that needs to happen because, again, this is side news we don't have an article for, but Dragon Ball Kakarot came out, and it's glitchy as flip. It's going to need to yeah. be patched. So I literally haven't bought it I mean, because it's, there are people already going, like, it's look it's at, fun, but they say it needs some patches. Look at uh, Borderlands 3. I mean, oh, Borderlands 3, how it came out, you mm-hmm. know? I mean, it almost killed the game itself. I mean, other than being an epic well, exclusive. Well, losing your character is a then, serious sin yeah. in a game with grind, man. Well, and, and you, you, no. you had the same issue with um, Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds, yeah, where my quest glitched to where it wouldn't let me mm-hmm. do choose my path in the quest. It wouldn't trigger the quest where I got the third option. And I got so ticked off yeah. that, you know, I started over and haven't finished it. You know, I've reinstalled Dragon Age Inquisition yesterday because a similar situation where a quest glitched on me and I couldn't complete it and that annoyed me. And honestly, I reinstalled it. I started to play it and I just got angry about my already progressed game again and I, I cut it off like five minutes later you know you my bro you know <laughs> that that's why i haven't finished started out of worlds because i worked hard to be able to choose the third option to make these fools work together yeah and they wouldn't let me make it work together and i wasn't gonna have my story screwed up so when i had to delete the save mm-hmm. i literally have not reinstalled out of worlds so yet. all this is just <laughs> evidence of take your time take your time Get a quality game without the major issues that are going to cause people to not want to play your game anymore. You know, it's fine to have some issues. Like, I mean, at least with, um, at least with like Skyrim, usually there, the, the, where there are issues that, that, that would, you know, are Bethesda games in general, Elder Scrolls, there's usually issues in the game, but nothing that really just completely screws you. Plus it saves stacks, so much where if you do run across something yeah, you rarely you get can, locked you can, out unless yeah. you're not allowing the game to stack you up all those saves yeah uh and on top of that i've never lost like a save file not saying it never happened but i've never like went back and oh look all of my progress is gone yeah. that's never happened uh so i'll give it that uh but you know, we no, don't know I, what the new I, Bethesda I think, is going to uh, do because, se- you know, yeah. Vault 76 has done all these things. No, so we'll say, you know, Bethesda, uh, Fallout, Fallout, um, what, Fallout 3 was the last one? No, Fallout 4. Fallout, Fallout 4. 4 had some save issues. Uh, really? People, uh. I know some people that lost their entire library of saves in Fallout 4, so. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what I would do. Do you know how many hours I've logged on <laughs> yeah. Fallout 4 Oh, times? no, no. This is somebody. That I think I think that particular, they, they had been playing for three, 400 hours. I would literally want Bethesda <laughs> to pay me for my time. A so, minimum of minimum wage So Bethesda hours may wage. not be a good example. <laughs> well, apparently if you name your kid Dover King, they'll give you a free copy of Elder Scrolls. You forgot about that, didn't you? Oh. <laughs> uh, I bet they regret that now. <laughs> but, uh, all right. So so that's that's some gaming news, I guess. Uh, I like the way we brought up Cyberpunk. Talked about, like, five other things that had nothing to do with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Let's, let's, do a, uh, let's, do, let's do a random encounter. Oh, wow. You're going quick into that. Yeah, might as well. I mean, go ahead and get one. Knock, there, man. knock one out. Oh. You okay. There you getting enough calcium? I'm, 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 I'm lost here. We're all damn died. I made a premature joke. Okay. 
Ah, oh, Lord. At your age, even the hearing goes. I know. 13. Unlucky 13. Fan submission. Oh, we got a fan submission. Uh, will Robert Downey Jr. help revitalize the Dr. Doolittle? Well, being that that, <laughs> being that, that just came out. And I've seen so many reviews. Oh, it's so uh, bad. Oh, God, it's supposed to be so bad. Oh, the literal words I've heard is somebody needs to resurrect Tony Stark because this mofo don't need to be making other movies. <laughs> I've heard it is terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Uh, oh not good. God. Yes, 19% on Rotten Tomatoes. It has been considered not good for kids. What not I, good for pull adults. Up, pull up the Rotten Tomatoes on that. Um, oh, yeah, check both. You're right. Let's see. Because I think 19% is the critic. It's actually better for the oh, audience. 76 audience. Uh, Most of the reviews I've seen on YouTube, people that I've like, I've watched a lot of stuff, like them, have been railing against this movie, though, uh, mm -hmm. saying that it is not good. I'm actually surprised at that audience score. I actually, I actually read a bunch of the reviews because I was curious about this movie. And the general consensus uh, from most of the audience, not not the critics now, the critics uh, picked a lot of things out on it, but most of the audience for that, it wasn't that bad of a movie other than apparently Robert Downey Jr. overacted everything. And so it just really, his acting came off really poorly. Um, well, I was watching the Nostalgia Critic and uh, Cinema Snob and a few others, the main thing I kept hearing is that it's just one-liners, mm -hmm. all the animals doing constant one-liners, and they said, if it doesn't land for you, you will hate this movie. Like, if the humor doesn't land for you, mm -hmm. you will hate it. And they said it can make kids laugh. It's designed to make kids laugh, I well, guess. Well, I mean, it's a PG but, movie yeah. about a, a talking animals. So. Well, no, I mean, I'll give it that. Maybe that's where the 76% came from, is uh, um, the, the, the people liking the talking animals. Personally, I've heard a lot of the jokes, like they went over a lot of jokes, and none of it caught my attention. Mm -hmm. And apparently what cop brought that one up? She's one of our uh, one of the people we roll with on Gears of War 5. Okay. Uh, and uh, her taste is terrible. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not surprised at all she would bring up Dr. Doolittle. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure the question was brought up uh, prior to the actual release of, of the movie. I mean, but, I think um, Dr. Do you think Robert Downey Jr. is the key? Clearly not, because the yeah. one consensus is nobody I've heard said Dr. Robert Downey Jr. was the best part of the movie. Yeah. It's all I, been... I, I honestly, like yeah, everybody basically, even people that enjoyed the movie did not enjoy Robert Downey Jr.'s acting in this movie, which is a little sad because honestly, I thought Robert Downey Jr. would do a better job. Um, I, I had a little more, uh, I guess, faith in, in, in him as an actor, but uh, I was I was wrong. Uh, <laughs> I Honestly, I'm not. I mean, he was made for that Tony Stark role, but I never liked anything else he did. Mm. So it's like, oh, he's back to doing stuff I don't like. But I mean, to give you an example of the jokes, just so you know, I'm not being unfair and that I kind of think that audience score is a little bit too high. One of the jokes is like, do you understand the words that are coming out of my bill from a duck? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking, we're talking about a white guy that got away Ooh. with blackface. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, one of the few. Squirrel says, say hello to my little friend. Ooh. But no, I, I know a lot of the a uh, lot of a lot of the concerns over this was, you know, of course the original the original book of Doctor Doolittle was written in what like the nineteen thirties or something. Uh, fart joke. The grand finale is a fart joke. I won't spoil it beyond that, but it's a I, fart joke. So I mean, you're you're, you're this is uh you you're taking a Victorian age book with uh with some Victorian age um. Oh no, they try to make it like it's a period piece, but then all the jokes are modern references. That's what's weird about it. They're well, supposed to be set like in You the couldn't get away with the book anymore. Like, well, yeah. Of I mean, course you, not. You the had, book a, had to be reprinted. You remember? had a, a black prince that wanted to be white so he could get with a white lady he to be lighter, in the yes, book. Yes. Uh, Snow white or sleep sleeping and beauty. So, you to be with and so Doctor Doolittle like bleached his skin. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, so I mean <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's a little bit of a strange. Now, I don't like material. the people that've been giving him trouble because of that. Because some no, people have been no. getting been blaming Rob Jr. for calling, trying to call, him, trying to act like he's racist because he's doing this movie. And I'm like, that that they're not doing that version of the book. I assure you, oh, they're no, not putting no, that in no. there. Like, 
He's instead a, like, weirdly serious and dark character. I'm not going to spoil his backstory, but the story that came from him was kind of messed up. And that's why I said, like, is this for kids or not for kids? You know what I mean? I don't know. It's it, it it's not something I'm going to take my kids to. And honestly, they don't want to see mm -hmm. it. Like, I told my son, you want to go see any movies? What do you think's out? And it's like, Dr. Doolittle's out. And he's like, nah. And I was like, his reaction. I was like, all right. We'll wait for uh, Morbius. All right. Well, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, that, uh, no, the answer is no. <laughs> uh, do you remember what the original question was? Yeah, does Robert Johnny Dooney going to breathe new life into this? No. No, okay. Uh, <laughs> Nobody should try to breathe life into this. Dr. Doolittle was always a mad concept uh -huh. and should have been left alone. So so let's uh, transition, I guess, from, from our uh, video game news to TV news. And we'll use uh, Dragon Quest to do that, uh, since it's uh, it's the in between. Uh, the new Dragon Quest animated movie is coming to Netflix in February. It's apparently on February thirteenth. We should have the Dragon Quest uh, uh, movie. Now this is based on Dragon Quest Five. We talked about this, I guess, about well, it a went year way back, nineteen ninety two. Yeah, we, we talked about this probably about a year ago, I think, when uh, when this was originally being talked about, but. It is, it is finally coming to Netflix. I've not seen Netflix really pushing any ads on this that much. Like, I've been a bit surprised they haven't uh, pushed much on this. But yeah, it's Dragon Quest V was always a weird choice to me. Being Dragon Quest V is one of the Dragon Quests that didn't get originally released in the U.S. And it had some very odd mechanics. Like, it was... Uh, it, it, <laughs> but maybe that's why. Maybe they wanted a story that everybody wouldn't already know. I mean, that's that's possible. Because otherwise, they would have went with like, yeah. I mean, I just several dragon uh, quest games that I know the story from the back, from beginning to end, and this isn't one of them. So it'll be like a new show to me. I'll be like, okay, I don't know what's gonna happen. Well, I mean, I can guess some of it, like even for the synopsis, but still, yeah. But, like, if you did, like, Dragon Quest 1, 2, 3, 7, I know the full story and would be like, oh, yeah, okay, I played that mm -hmm. already, but okay. Yeah, like, 5 was one that I started playing. Like, I got it. Uh, you got a Famicom? I have got it uh, fan translated for uh -huh. a mod, uh, NES modder. Um, and, honestly, I didn't finish it. Like, it, it to me, it was one of the 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 least fun of the game <laughs> they tried some experimental things with mechanics mm -hmm. sometimes and it can be very annoying i mean it does occasionally happen that you're like oh lord that's a pain in the butt so i get you i get you so the good thing is because i didn't ever finish playing it i mean it, it's not spoiled for me i guess <laughs> luca's gonna turn out to be the hero uh yeah, yeah. I can guess that, but it's, okay. it's Dragon Quest. It's Dragon Quest. I mean, Dragon Quest has always been a very similar story, like traditional like, yeah. heroic fantasy yeah. story. Very traditional. Well, like we've said before, I mean, Dragon Quest is one of those games where every game you know what you're gonna get. Basically, you know the type of story you're gonna get, and uh, you I'm know just... when we when we compared you know Dragon Quest with Final Fantasy in one of our random encounters uh, before, you know, we talked about that. It's it's consistent, um, mm -hmm. where you know Final Fantasy isn't as consistent. I'm glad they didn't go all Toriyama with the graphics. They didn't do you know Toriyama does the games. I actually like this look. Mm -hmm. The graphics are really what's pulling me in because yeah, I a like lot they of, went uh, realistic. The the, the, the realistic. Japanese market was not happy about their choice of uh, more Western style CG. Um, they would kiss my ass. <laughs> they got all that anime. I'm just saying though, they got enough. Let us have something. Well, I mean, Jeez. choosing Western style CG for for Dragon Quest is a bit odd, being the Dragon Quest market is mostly Japanese. Like Dragon Quest is not necessarily done True. nearly as good in the U.S. as it, you know where it's done extremely well in Japan. But I think they're trying to do this as a show, and uh, maybe Netflix's main audience is Western. Though, I mean, for from Netflix's perspective, it depends on who watches the most Netflix. Yeah. I get it, because remember now, this is Netflix doing this. This isn't an anime company. This is Netflix. And Netflix might be like, we mostly have Western viewers and European. We're going to go with an art style that they're going to like. So I'm going to give them, give them a chance, because I really like Castlevania. They made some good calls. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hope that this is going to be another good call and good execution. 
right, all right. You know, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, even though they have effed up just as many times as they have not effed up. Yeah, yeah. But I've gotten some good things out of it. No, I mean, we still, I still go back to Castlevania God, for my Castlevania for my saving great. saving grace of uh, of Netflix's oh, shows. Man, you know? I, well, I'm waiting for the second. That is that is my most anticipated animated show for another season. Is Netflix, man? I, mm-hmm. I am hyped. Uh, for Castlevania because that was just awesome from beginning to end. All right, um, let's see. Let's go to Avenue Five. Uh, so this is uh this is gonna oh, yeah, be you nerds, sci-fi yeah. nerds. Yeah, uh, uh, Q Q's not a big fan of uh, sci-fi and especially I guess not hey, sci-fi if it has comedy. Magic in it. If it has magic in it, sci-fi. Yeah. Then- but uh, there, there's, there's going to be a new show. It's supposed to come out tonight. Like, we're filming this on Sunday. So it comes out tonight yeah, on HBO. Live, they listen to us live Well, right but some people are going to be listening to us on YouTube and podcasts, which comes out after. But That's they know why. we do it Sunday. Well, I, don't you talk down you don't, know. you don't know that. Don't you talk down? We could, hey, we could, I believe we could have a new. We could have y'all. a new viewer. Oh, well, uh, hey, welcome aboard. Pay attention. It's Sundays, <laughs> man. Go uh, read the webpage. So anyway... So yeah, see, new. See, Teddy Sprinkles agree. They think it looks rough. See, it ain't just me that looked at this and we're like, oh. oh I like it. It reminds me, uh, you know. Of course, I'm, I'm a big sci-fi fan, and I've always loved sci-fi comedy since you know, like Red Dwarf days. You know, Red what? Red Dwarf. Okay. You're not familiar with Red Dwarf? The name sounds familiar. It's an old uh, BBC comedy. Oh, I remember that one. Uh, what was the one with the blue chick and oh god, the weird one. Farscape. Farscape. Farscape was cool. Yeah. So, anyway. And was it Lux? I think it was Lux. Was that the name of it? Lux. Or just a character? Lux was a, was a, was a show, I think. As yeah, well. Lux was interesting. But that, no, I don't think that was interesting. <laughs> that was a weird show. Um, anyway. So, anyway, maybe something you want to check out if you like comedy and, and sci-fi. It uh, does look funny. I'll say that. I mean, it's got Hugh Laurie in it. So, I mean, that, that that's. Which he, one's that? He's the guy from House. That guy. That guy. Okay. Um, you know oh, what? Oh, he was the angry man. doctor guy. Yeah. yeah. He was always limping around and being an asshole. Okay, yeah. I might watch it if he's being a jerk again. I, I mean, like he, I, I don't know if he knows how not to be a jerk. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like I said, it did look like it could be funny. It's just mm-hmm. it doesn't leap off for me because you guys are bigger sci-fi. The editor yeah. and... Zeno, like his name gives it away, are kind of sci-fi fans. Well, and since we're talking about sci-fi and HBO, why don't we talk about comics and HBO with Watchmen? <laughs> <laughs> yes, finally. Nice segue. One of these suckers <laughs> bites the dust. Uh, Took yeah. long enough. <laughs> yeah, so Watchmen apparently uh, is most likely canceled. Now, there is still a chance, I think, that it can continue. It's just the current producer, uh, Damon Lindolf, Lindelf, uh, well, however you pronounce Lindeloth. his name, yeah, Lindeloth or Lindeloth. <laughs> he he has stepped away from this, and HBO basically said that they don't see doing it without him. So most likely, but he did give his blessing if HBO wanted to continue without him. The everything it's one of those odd things. Like everybody's like this critically acclaimed. If you read these articles, they're all talking about how highly rated and highly. And I'm like, uh, yeah. Nobody I know that likes comics or likes Watchmen is like this show. And I have asked people yeah. that read the comics. Well, and, and that's like, the and thing. Just... It's it's one of those things. Of critics, uh, once again, critics versus audience. You know, the audience score on What's this. What's Rotten Tomato? Uh, it's like 56% editor? is the Rotten Tomato for the audience. While the Rotten Tomato for the uh, critics is like 90-something. Uh, uh, you want 2000? No, what the heck is the same there area? Uh, yeah, 96, uh, 96 critic, 50, 54 critic audience. 54. Once again, this is another one of those shows of the critics being so far off from the audience score. I mean, literally almost double the rating. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it isn't the most dramatically seen, but it says a lot. And that's the thing where you can't trust a lot of articles because they're written by critics because they say the show's critically acclaimed, which I guess technically critics like it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's getting viewership, you know, because the critics aren't enough to keep a show afloat. But all I know is that people that like The Watchmen, like the movie or like the comics, did not like this. Because it does not really seem to be based on the comics or the movie. Yeah. It just seems to be a whole different thing. 
that references that other stuff and poops on it, but is not really actually. A well, and that's the thing; it. it sort of poops on the characters that people loved in the uh, in the previous, like Rorschach and yeah. others. Yeah. So but, when you when you when you take because I mean I, I I don't have a problem even even though I, I'm I'm not really fond of the political leanings of the show. I'm not it being politically um, driven doesn't really bother me because eh. The comic was politically driven. Like it, it was, was. Just... it was, it was definitely a statement. <laughs> yeah. The problem though is that uh, it this isn't a well done execution. Yeah. Like it isn't like this is truly insightful. It's just white supremacy is bad. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Could you put a Watchmen spin on this that works? No. Okay. Yeah. Who's um, the main character? The normal new main character and everything. Angry black woman. And well, like, and that's the thing to me. Like, if you if you wanted to have a political, you could have at least stuck with the the. the I mean, but no, let me look at this though. I'm just gonna say this. Okay, the new the man theme in black of the of the original. New so. la- new new man in black empowered black woman. New James Bond movie empowered black woman. Watchmen series empowered black woman character. Like it's becoming its own stereotype, and it's not being backed by good writing. Like it's tokenism and. As a black guy, trust me, I've seen it a lot of times. The token black character. It's tokenism again, <laughs> backed by poor writing. Mm-hmm. And I want to see somebody at least put the effort in. Like, some people didn't like Black Panther. But you know what? I, why I didn't like Black Panther? Because there's supposed to be black people in Black Panther. <laughs> it made sense. And they really re- tried to give a good homage to the comic. Mm-hmm. So I liked that because I said, it doesn't feel token. It doesn't feel inappropriate. Wakanda was this paradise. It feels not some stuff you threw in to go, look at how much we're honoring you black people. It's like, what, what, what? Ugh, dude, we didn't ask for this. Like, when I saw The Watchmen, I never at one point said, where are the black people? I was kind of glad we weren't in it because most of the main characters were kind of effed in the head. So I was kind of like, I'm kind of glad we're not a part of that crap show. And But now you've got, like, super cop lady who's, you know... It is easily replaceable with super men in black lady who's easily replaceable with super James Bond lady. And I'm just like, in fact, is it the same actress? I can't tell. Could just be the same wow. person doing all of it. I mean, it's the same character. It's the same character. Gifted, natural, badass. Everybody respects yeah. her so could whoop every white man's butt she's ever seen. This character has become a trope. It's an annoying trope. You can't say that about it. I understand you're white, but uh, it's a troll, yeah, and just, it's I'm just annoying. Sit over here with my mouth shut, up. and it's just a different type of token. You know, it's just like the token black guy that got mm-hmm. thrown in to follow around and go like, "Look, there's one black guy." Now instead, it's look, we put a black woman up top. <laughs> hey, so um, um I, if you're gonna do it, just write it well. That's all I'm saying. Write it well. You'll always be my favorite token. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Anyways, let's do another random encounter. You, hey, hey, you know, I'm not going to say that because I'm going to let you deal with the repercussions of that. <laughs> oh, all right. Just people, please write it better. You're hurting our feelings, man. Poorly written characters are an insult. They could be more insulting than being in, not included. All right, so six. MTFBWY. Huh? <laughs> Wait, what did you roll? Six. Should Disney reboot Star Wars, continue the current time armor, or go with the quarter of the Earth? I don't think they should reboot Star Wars. I mean, as much as I don't really care for the direction of the last uh, uh, three films, the great thing about Star Wars is it is uh, usually cut into epics. That epic's over. Um, my answer. Oh, are you may the force be with you. My, That's what that stands for. Oh, okay. Uh, the epic's over. The, you know, the three movies are over. You, 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 you move on. You do another story, and um, you know, hopefully, you, 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 you grab more people's attention, or you know, or maybe you don't. I'd. I don't want to. I don't want to see it rebooted though. Like rebooting it to me leaves bad taste in my mouth every time I hear it. I support you on that. That a reboot is too late. <clears throat> Keyword being too late. 
I believe they should continue with what they're doing with the Mandalorian. Uh, you should tell the story a long, long time ago, a uh, place far, far away from that bullshit in the last few movies. No, to be this big space, it's big. Yeah, I think it would be interesting. You know what? At this point, they have done one thing. They actually have me finally going. Maybe the next movie, let's go to different Force people. Like not no Jedi at all, just a whole different group that that works with the Force differently. I think they've killed the Jedi. I believe that Disney has literally killed the Jedi to the point that, at this point, I'd rather see some people that are a completely different group. Because, why wouldn't there be? I mean, in an old republic, which is why our boy Blacks brought this up, there were a lot of other traditions in the game referenced. Yeah. Man, completely different. Uh, the Keldorians had these monks. I mean, there was all these different groups. I would rather we just go, you know what? They killed them. Let's just do a whole new... Because the Force will always be a part of Star Wars. But it doesn't have to be the Jedi and Sith story. I think the Jedi and Sith story has been brutally murdered, and thus we should just accept it and move yeah. on to a new story. I guess that's that, that's true. I'd say no reboot, but go with the Kotar and other era is not necessarily a bad idea. Yeah, and um, no Jedi. I think the Jedi just need to be done because Disney apparently doesn't care about them. They're not going to do them right. So, I mean, they literally said, let's kill the past. I mean, mm -hmm. their whole vote was like, okay, Disney, then you better come up with something new because you've killed the Jedi for me. I don't want to see a Jedi or Sith again anymore. So you better come up with a new tradition. All right, go, but go. Get out there and get right. And you wanted to do this, yeah. but back it up, bitch. You started it. Give us something new. But yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I agree with that. Uh, like I said, I, I just don't want to see a reboot. I think reboot's a bad idea. Um, no, yeah. I mean, I'm tired of reboots. Yeah. I'm tired of them. Just tell a different story. Mm -hmm. But I do think they've done the Jedi in. I think the Jedi are done. And right. I said, this is actually makes me sad because while I'm not a used Star Wars fan, I love lightsabers. And I like space wizards. I thought the Jedi, the Jedis mm -hmm. and Sith themselves were an interesting power suite. But if I got to see another light, dark, whining ass, oh, no, I'm tired <laughs> of this bull crap. I'm tired of this back and forth. It's like an abusive fucking relationship that won't end. Yeah. You're just like, can it be done? Can it be done? But all right. Well, I, th I think that's enough on that. Uh, pull up, uh, pull up the comments uh, for us real quick. Uh, Kimmy Context uh, had a comment about the Black Panther since uh, since Q brought it up. I figured I'd let him uh, read and reply right. to the comment. Kimmy uh, Context. There. I have always felt that Black Panther was misunderstood as a comic book character. Black Panther is king, therefore he must do what is in the best interest of his people. I never seen him as a hero or a villain. He's a character that sends either uh, that sends either of those roles due to his status. That is actually a good way to look at it because he's both been in conflict with and assisted the Avengers, but he has always been very clear that he's doing what he has to do for Wakanda versus I'm trying to be like a card carrying hero. Mm -hmm. And I mean, again, like I've seen some criticism of Black Panther as a movie, uh, but to me. Most of those criticisms have failed because in this one case, yes, Black Panther is going to be, like, very black. It's going to be very positive because that's what that whole concept is. It's the place where it belongs. Yeah. But by the same standard, I just don't listen to people that goes, oh, this is paradise. I guess the library of paradise. Like, yeah, dude, that's what it is. It's a fantasy. Yes, it's supposed to be that. You don't go see it. You know, if you don't like it, that's what it is. On the first says, hey, I defend you that I feel like we shouldn't be race swapping your characters. That's dumb. We shouldn't think that everything's better just because we put a black person as the main character. No. James Bond is James Bond. I don't want to see a black James Bond. Oh, God. I don't. No. I wouldn't mind seeing a black spy that's a member of MI, what is it, M7, whatever the agency is. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing that. But he doesn't need to be James Bond. That's stupid. That's insulting. To everybody involved. Like, there's no flattering part of that. So please, stop that. Just give us a well-written character, or let us make our Black Panther shut up. All right? We'll make our own <laughs> Black Panther. We'll be over here doing our thing. But stop the tokenism. Please. It's, it's, it's sad. And guess what? We don't watch it. Why do you think black people watch Watchmen? Just because they put a sister up there? No, I mean, she's cute. And she's not a bad actress, but it ain't enough to us to want to watch y'all political bull crap about cops and capes and junk. No, that ain't our thing. We ain't watching it just because you did that. Do you really think that if more black people went to go see MIB because they made a black lady the main character? No. 
Do you think more black people are going to go see James Bond because there's a black woman that's going to be the new 007? No. That doesn't appeal to us. It doesn't even work. You know what it appeals to? White people. So y'all need to stop supporting it. Damn it. I hate to say this, but get a little of your racism back. Stop supporting this bull crap. Damn it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all the ones up there being guilty and going to see this bull crap and giving it a 96. Oh, go look. Remember, no, pull up that Rodden Man. I bet you there's a bunch of white faces on the critics. Pull up the critics. I think they have pictures of them. Look at that. Look at that. One brother and an... Oh, look, they've got a couple of brothers in there. Y'all sellouts. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but oh, still mostly white faces. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I see a lot of uh, non-white faces. But, hey. Um, I know. I'm very disappointed, actually. Yeah, like, yeah. Y'all watching this bullshit? <laughs> I only went to see the movie because y'all made me see it. So like, talking about white people, uh, Patrick Stewart. Uh, <laughs> hey, don't look at me. That's all y'all. I don't know what the <laughs> hell happened to him. So, so the the Captain Picard. Um, he was on Patrick Charlie's Stewart. Angels and lost his mind. <laughs> Apparently, uh, a lot of people have uh, have 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 talked up about his uh, almost. So he was basically had a panel said he was he almost uh, did not take the role. Because he didn't feel that uh, the next generation's type Picard fit in the current uh, political landscape of today, and I was just like, "But I'm so sorry." But Star Trek's a sci- like that. Star Trek's a sci-fi show. What's it? What's it matter about I'm, today's I'm sorry. political climate? I know how much y'all climate. love Sir Patrick Stewart, man. I feel bad. After my little rant, I was feeling a little guilty at the side of those black faces, but now I'm like, ooh, ooh, I got covered. Patrick Stewart got me covered. That's so, messed so, up. So apparently the reason why Patrick Stewart uh, picked, uh, did did reprise his role was because he said uh, it, it, it they, they, they allowed it to, um, I guess, I don't know, something about a post-Brexit world and, uh, and, and, and Trump, so... I'm not even going to go into all this. It's a weird read, and I, I, I lost a little respect for Patrick Stewart oh, after Jesus, reading it. Oh, Jesus, he's getting involved in a used refugee problem. It's a Border Patrol so, fucking plot point. Oh, Lord. Yeah, so anyway. They built a space wall. That's, that's, Keep that's, those damn Klingons out. That's all I'm going to say on that, because I'm, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> he built a space wall. Is that it? <laughs> he, oh, my God, he's helping with the refugee problem. Is he going to be, oh, Lord, he's riding the Space Railroad, <laughs> the Space Underground Railroad. Mm. So Morbius, Morbius is a new film that's, uh, <laughs> that, that, that Sony is doing uh, with, with Jared Leto. Look at that. Um, Captain, Picard's, <laughs> Captain Picard's war against Border Patrol, Space uh, Border Patrol. <laughs> So Jared Leto is uh, is Morbius. Actually, I was I was surprised. I watched the trailer for this. It actually looks, looks like really it good, could man. be a good movie. Um, I mean, this this will this looks like this could redeem him from Joker. Hopefully, they do good. a better villain movie than they did with us uh, with Venom. Uh, you know I hate Venom. Don't bring that up. <laughs> you just trying to get back at me because of the car thing. Look, I didn't do it. Okay, I like my favorite Star Trek. Was Star Trek the next generation? Captain Picard mm-hmm. is my captain. Was, apparently, you know, now he's the people's captain. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so Jared Leto, Morbius. Uh, this even, they, they, they've got uh, Matt Smith from uh, Doctor Who is going to be in here. Uh, he, he's going to be. Um, hey, the cool Lux, part is that it's part of the Crown, Spider-Man so. universe. Yeah, it looks like they are combining. The, 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 I think the picture that they used in the background was the Tobey Maguire uh, Spider-Man, but I think they did come back and say that it was just... Yeah, because, uh, I mean, it was Spider-Man with murder both on it, and, yeah, you know, if you've watched That Homecoming, it was supposed to be a link, so... Well, I mean, that came from Homecoming, remember? Yeah. Like, so I honestly believe, plus the character who plays... Because in the trailer, this can't be a spoiler... I mean, the player who plays the vulture is seen talking to him, and there's mm-hmm. nothing saying it ain't the same guy. So it's fully possible that this is a, that the Sony is building a well, Spider Verse. They are talking about, I think, doing a Sinister Six. So, ooh, well, I hope they do build a Spider Verse. My problem is, I hope they don't tie it to, a, to the Disney Marvel Universe. Because I'm sorry, I think Disney is going to do just Marvel what they did to Star Wars. So I almost don't want this Spider-Man I'm really enjoying being tainted 
by the nonsense I'm expecting them to do to Marvel. Well, ah, we see what yeah. they did with the last big franchise they were given, man. I never thought anyone could sink Star Wars. I thought it was unsinkable. Marvel could sink. We've seen it sink. It's had some freaking bad times. Before. Well, I mean, yeah, no, like I mean, the comics have had a a, yeah. a, a very roller coaster lifespan. I and mean, Disney threw so much money in trying to make people swallow that Captain Marvel pill that I'm going like, if they keep that up, they are going to sink this ship again. They're just going to take everything they bought and murder it and bury it in the backyard. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, like I said, though, this actually does look good. I mean, if if, if you haven't seen the trailer, uh, check it out. It's it's pretty good trailer. Um, I'm hoping for this. Of course, I was also didn't think that the Venom trailer was as bad as, uh, as, as Q had pointed it out to be. So I could be wrong, though. The biggest though, problem when I showed... is if you like it, they've ruined making it a part of the Spider-Verse like they were talking about doing because they've already went too far in the story. Well, yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was definitely an issue. I mean, what would they do? Movie. They'd have to like have Spider Man get the symbiote but for I, a while. But I also don't see how. I mean, if they if they are going to do the Sinister Six, are they going to redo Venom? Or are they going to well, somehow? Venom was a part of Sinister Six. It was like um, Vulture, Goblin. I want to say Shocker, Doc Ock. But uh, Venom wasn't in there. Wasn't no one not... can trust Venom. Venom's not okay. a part of Sinister Six. I forgot who those are, but I know Venom was. Oh, Scorpion, and I think Rhino. Okay. But there's been several, but I know some of those. But I, don't think I thought Venom... there was a version that had like Venom and Carnage Maybe in it or something. Maybe once, uh... but he's not a part of the core. Okay. Because they're alien monsters that no one can trust. Because I remember why. It's like nobody wants to work with them because they're like, hey, we want to be Spider Man. Mm -hmm. We want to eat everyone's brain. You're not Sinister Six material. We, we think <laughs> we appreciate your uh, application. <laughs> Please try again in the future. Yeah. Now, they've had their own kind of Sinister Sticks because there's been multiple symbiotes. It ain't just Carnage, remember? There's been at one point like Oh, no, yeah, there was, a, there was a whole, yeah, there was a whole big symbiote thing there mm -hmm. for a while. Um, I want to see what they do with Doc Ock because I'm a big Doc Ock fan. I, I am curious. You know what? And I'm going to say something cause I, I, that, I, that may shock people, but I really like the female Doc Ock from the Spider-Verse movie. Yeah. I would not mind if they brought a live-action version. I don't know why, but I thought she was really cool. I actually enjoyed that iteration of Doc, uh, Dr. Octopus. Yeah. Well, I mean, she was an alternate universe Doc Ock. And, I mean, you even saw the, uh, in that movie, you saw where Spider-Man was, like, you know, sort of clued in that that was a, a, a female version of his Doc Ock, you know. Because oh. he was like, wait, your name's... Uh, oh, oh no and then it was just like she oh was, crap <laughs> but i like that she was so intimidating because she was just like when she started like when she does the reveal i was like i'm feeling this i'm feeling this so um but i no, would not she, mind she that made an interesting character and so they didn't try to just uh they also didn't try to just skin um you know doc ock over a female they actually gave her well, she a had unique, her own look uh, and her personality, personality was a little more menacing to me mm -hmm. i actually liked it she like her I'm going to enjoy watching it. I was like, Ooh. yeah. They didn't rehash the Doc Ock um, storyline with with a not that know, appears. It looks like she has full character. control. It looks like she has a, un a unique story to her and her own version from the little it, bit that you know, she was in that arms. film. Uh, I liked her. I actually wouldn't mind seeing that Doc Ock if you're going, you know, because that's just I, a I, case I, of a I, good I, rewrite. I, honestly, they could they could. Um, well, I mean, since Miles Morales. Uh, is hinted to be in this universe. Oh, yeah, because his uncle is in it. Yeah. yeah they Dan could. Dan Glover played Miles' yeah. uncle. They could definitely um, do that, you know. They could play around with a lot of that, yeah. So. Hey. Hey, then who knows? Maybe we'll get a Roger Rabbit version of a weird scenario and we have the cartoon Miles I mean, it's live one action the, Peter. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I try never to complain you know, you hear it so much. Oh, well, that's not like the comic. Well, I mean, obviously, the the the, the movie universe is different than the comics. You know, mm -hmm. so if and and that's why it doesn't bother me as much when they make changes to characters if in the it's movies. Quality. Like I as just long think as it's it, quality. Yeah. it is not always. Do not think that Dice Dusty thinks it's a bad thing when they do a female replacement or even a race replacement. It's a bad thing when you don't put any dang well, effort it's into when writing it, it. When it feels like it's just a replacement yeah. and it's not just a hit a check mark, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, well, tell me about this character. She's good at everything. Oh yeah. wow. And I mean, and that's the difference. You 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 have uh you have a replacement or you have a revision. You know, and example, I want to revision. Miles was not a great Spider-Man in first movie. Remember, he couldn't control his powers. Mm -hmm. He was scared. It actually showed, even though Miles is a 
black character. First of all, he's not black Peter Parker. He's got his own name. He's got his own family. But also, he wasn't instantly amazing. He he goes through these trials. He has his tragedy. He learns how to do what he needs to do. It's writing. Writing, people. Speaking of Miles, uh, a new comic with him came out recently. Oh. It's called uh, Spider-Man The End. It's actually a uh, futuristic version where he's older. Um, it looks really good. Like I'm actually thinking about going and picking it up. The only reason I haven't picked it up yet is I'm sort of if it's if it's a short run, then I might sort of wait, wait for, for a to, trade. Well, yeah. I like trade. Um, but uh, just like Spider Man again. Uh, yeah. So what an old. Whoa! Wow! He is much older. Yeah. Yeah. No. Like. I'm, most of uh, most of the universe at this point is dead. Like it's a it's it's um, Brooklyn still holding in there. But <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna have to check that out, man. That sounds dark, but also interesting. But I've read some of the synapses of it and stuff, and it looks really. It looks like good. it's a whole series because I saw the Hulk the end, the Venom yeah. the end, Captain okay. Marvel the end. That must be a happy story. <laughs> Yay! Oh, but she. Oh my God! How? Okay, she's a super okay. Saiyan. So they're, they're just doing the end Ooh, is the actual look series. At, look at Old Man Strange. That yeah. looks cool. I like okay. Old Man uh, Morales. He reminds me of Leroy from uh, Tekken. I, I may check this out. I I like aged versions of characters, characters to sort of see how they've progressed. You know, because it's one of the things you don't. A lot of times you miss out on in uh, comics because they they keep rebooting. Are they never really age forward their characters very mm -hmm. much? So whenever they do these age forwards, like Old Man Logan and stuff like that, I've always really enjoyed that that type of run of uh, and everybody of comics, listening. So. If you uh, hit up the chat, like you uh, go back to look at it, our wonderful editor is posting links, uh, so you can uh, actually thanks. go check these out. Thank you very much. Great work. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we, we've, we've sidetracked, but I think it was a great <laughs> sidetrack because, I mean, honestly, yeah, that series looks good. And if Captain Marvel dies, I will buy that comic alone on that <laughs> oh. and just read the last page and uh, just be like, ah, oh, there we go. So <laughs> Go quietly into the night. Wow. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's get another random encounter. Um, I've already rolled. Yeah, editor, why don't you roll us a die? Yeah. Uh, one of those you can do it all right she rolled an 18 yes good job uh xeno's oh, lives Zeno lives. lives again Zeno. what animal well. would you reincarnate as do do your personality everyone, everyone provide an, an answer but xeno yeah, I'm yeah. For your animal answer. crap <laughs> oh, well, you, first, you, editor. you rolled it editor oh man <laughs> um <laughs> So there's this thing called bird personalities, uh -huh. and everybody has one. And as a bird personality, has a, it's like a four four bird personality. Okay. And so you've got the dove, you've got the peacock, you've got the eagle, and you've got the owl, and they all represent four different types of people. And knowing those personalities, it's kind of helped me figure out how to talk to people. I've determined you to be a peacock. Okay. Yeah. Um. Because I'm, I'm gonna have to look this up now. See. Well, see. See. Yes, you should. Uh, because you are commanding of attention. You when you walk into a room, like everybody knows, like looks at you. Because I mean, it's just the way that you present yourself. I mean, remember when we went to Tupelo? Mm -hmm. Man, nobody was gonna mess with you, but they knew you were there. So, so what are what are you though? I'm a dove. You're a dove. Yeah. All right. So. What am I? Yeah, What what's Q? What am I? What is Q? I think buzzard. That buzzard. wasn't one of the answers. Um, wow. Buzzards are horrible. I, I would I'd feast say, on all of your I'd corpses. say that Q okay. could, could also be a peacock. <laughs> all right. Me? So let's see. What I'm animal, so low key. What animal would you, you be out. reincarnated to? No, I'm not. I'm I'm gonna say a honey badger, because you know honey badger don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's very true. You know he did not go into a lot of detail of if you know that you're an animal now, because uh, well honestly if I don't know I don't even care at that point actually. <laughs> but uh, I I want to say uh, a gorilla because at least I have a chance of maybe getting pants That's again. That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. Wait, wait, are you saying that Mark uh Zeno's a gorilla? Or are you? I was saying he was talking about. 
I said I don't want to be reincarnated as a gorilla, and he said that's racist. Oh, Why is that okay. racist, Zito? Explain it to me. I don't know. I was just making a joke. You sure, man? Oh. I mean, what you trying to say, man? Oh, oh we're you talking about, about what? Black people you I like thought to share we with were us? giving you an animal, not, <laughs> well, not no, each of us. We don't want to. We don't want to talk about Ghostbusters. Uh, <laughs> I honestly that's thought this question blooded. was what that's animal is Zito? <laughs> not that far off the mark, but still. <laughs> when she heard about the new movie, she went on a. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, it's like nobody cares about our. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Trump! Oh, Trump! <laughs> Beat the crowd! Trump! Oh, <laughs> 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 oh man! But she flipped out, I'm, though, man. I'm, I'm, man. So, I'm so happy we're not monetized yet because we you know will be with that. <laughs> but no, the reason why I did that is because like they can learn sign language, and thus I'm like, well, you know, I might be able to actually get a TV or an Xbox if I get the right sign. You know, I might be able to get back in the community if I'm a gorilla. I like, man, this gorilla is good at sign language. He keeps flipping us the bird, though. Does he know what that means? <laughs> oh, okay. What what have we not Also thumbs. 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 Yeah. I have thumbs. Okay. And I guess she wants to be a dove. No, yeah. that's not what I want to be. I thought the Jesus, point of the question the mail, huh? I thought the point of the question was to give Zeno an animal. Oh, it may have been. Um, but we don't care. Uh Obviously. how how offensive would it be if I comment on our female editor not getting the point? Uh, I mean, I think she may have actually gotten the point. Yeah, you, you gotta read point? Blood Axe's comment. Yeah, because I, 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 I says you were giving him an animal. Maybe you didn't get the point. Oh, nope, I didn't. Told you I was a buzzard. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I'm feasting on the corpses. Yeah. Oh, well, All right. you, yeah, honey so. badger, honestly. Sadly, I can't <laughs> argue with that because you give no Fs. <laughs> So let's see. What else we got left? Uh, we did the Patrick Stewart. Uh, duh. Oh, yeah. Cosplayer becomes a, a leg- gets gains a legislative seat in Taiwan. I'm for this. More cosplayers for office. So that was interesting. Um, I'm almost scared to name any we know, though, because apparently there's intense rivalries that I didn't know about. <laughs> so I was like, I don't want to play yeah, any side yeah, of that. Yeah, let's, let's let that go there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be in the middle of none of that. I love it. The immediate discomfort. Zeno's you know, like, I'm not gonna. You um, get yeah. scared too easy, Peacock. No, I mean, I just don't like drama, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm not all about Welcome that. Welcome to the geek community, apparently. I didn't know there was drama, but I'm finding out every day. You did? Dude. I was like, what? You're telling me that all these wonderful people don't get along perfectly? <laughs> so, yeah. So, this is, I mean, that was just a little tidbit that was I thought was interesting fun um so yeah cosplayers and uh in 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 politics so i want you to know don't think that you can't cosplay and still have a professional career people your hobbies do not make anything away from your intelligence and your competency get out there do your thing all right Mm -hmm. there you go our positive message it's the only positive thing i've said all year So I hear they're doing a remake of uh, Superman uh, and Lois Lane. Man, or... that ass oh, damn it. <laughs> if you okay, people that have watched the Infinity Crisis know what I'm talking about. This is a lame Superman. You know how lame he is. There were other Superman from other universes in Infinity Crisis because they go to other universes. Uh-huh. All those other Superman were more manly, and Lois flirted with them. He is literally the cuck Superman. When she meets other Superman, she's uh-huh. looking at them and going like, "Ooh, look uh-huh. at you." This really happened. And then he gets into a fight with the other Superman, and he beats his ass in front of Lois. And Lois had to save him from the better Superman. He is a cuck bitch, okay? Wow. It's like they wow. wrote him as a cuck bitch. This is a lame-ass Superman. He, they did not try to make him anything but lame. And I can't believe that's the one they want to do the freaking series of. I want to see the one from the Universe who lost his Lois and was kind of this dark Superman who was brooding and did the F around, which kind of was cool. Because I like it sometimes to see a serious Superman who's a little bit more hardened. Mm-hmm. They're also doing a Texas uh, Walker Ranger, Texas Ranger. I never thought I'd say this, but no. I mean, I'm sorry, but Chuck Norris is Walker to Texas Ranger. I'd rather old Chuck Norris do it than get somebody to replace him. He, when they wrote Walker, Texas Ranger, they wrote it because of Chuck Norris. Like, that's a rare case where the role didn't exist before they chose the actor it was a case of we're going to make a show about chuck norris and he's going to be a texas ranger so i'm not really thinking this is going to be that good also who the hell is that guy does he even know martial arts 
Like I don't know it's that guy. guy from, He's uh, Dean from uh, Supernatural. Supernatural. Yeah. Then hell no, I know he doesn't know kung fu. <laughs> he can't kung fu a bear. Chuck Norris stared a bear down and kicked his ass. You think he can win a fight with a bear? I mean, he might. I don't know. Man, let me tell you something. You don't know Chuck Norris. Uh, I mean, I. <sighs> I don't know, dude. I just thought it was interesting. I threw it in the news thing. I don't really care. It may be good. You don't know. I mean, but yeah, it is sort of weird. It is sort of weird to replace Chuck Norris. I mean, Chuck Norris is so iconic. And now I want y'all to understand I'm not being unfair. It's because they're calling it Walker. Now, if they did a new Texas Ranger with a different Texas Ranger, that'd be fine. But that's not what they say they're doing. They say they're doing Walker Texas Ranger. And I'm like, no. Why can't they just have a continuing storyline? Have Chuck do a cameo and train the new Rock Ranger. That'd be cool. Pass the mantle, man. Why do you people have to keep rebooting? Well, I mean, folks? that just brings to to another conversation we've had way too many times about passing the mantle versus. I mean, was Walker the last name? I mean, maybe it's uh, maybe it's uh, his, his son? son. That's what I was thinking. Well, no, okay. If that's the case, I'll rescind my criticism. That's fine. I just am getting tired of the replace. I mean, at least it's not a black woman. I mean, hey, look, the first reboot where they didn't replace it with a black lady. That is new. I'm actually shocked that we don't have, like, a sister being like, I'm the new Walker Texas Ranger. He just like, okay. All right. You're uh, filling for Chuck Norris, huh? So, yeah, no. Anyway. Last uh, last thing we have is I, I got to do at least one man. I have to. Did you know that under Chuck Norris fierce under his beard he doesn't have a chin. He just has another fist. Chuck Norris man. All right. I feel like you could have picked a better one than that. Yeah, yeah. I there's fucked so, it up. Yeah. There's so many. Well, what do you? What's one of yours? Um, um I don't remember all those things, man. That, that, that that's like high school. The all the Chuck Norris. Uh... Did you know Chuck Norris split the union with a roundhouse kick? That's how the Civil War was won. Oh, yep. This show's going downhill now. So let's just do a quick shout out to uh, this developer who gave their game free. It's uh, there we go. Developer says game started selling 400% better on Steam after releasing Torrent. Um, so basically, this game developer, can you scroll down so I can get the name of the game? Developer? I was wondering if you knew the name um, of the game. <laughs> <laughs> when Top Hot Shooter Danger Gazers. Uh, released on Steam, it didn't really do that well. They ended up releasing the game as a as a torrent, and people actually was was they thought it was so cool that the game company was like, "Hey, look! If you can't buy our game, here it is for Come free." On, name. That uh, have you found the game company yet? As that showed up, Bobo Kazaza. Um, <laughs> I'm still trying to recover from the fact that the first name is Shoda, and I'm like, uh. Don't Google this game company. <laughs> but anyway. Do not Google that game company. When releasing the game for free, people actually went out and bought the game more. Uh, once again, showing that, uh, you know, if you're not a money-grubbing bitch, you actually could can still make money. Um, Ooh, look, even in an the article, they only use the last name after that. They, even they were like, we're not going to say that <laughs> word again. I'm like, yeah, you probably shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so... Cool, cool on them. I think that's a really cool, cool idea because, I mean, yeah, a lot of people don't have the money to spend, especially on these indie games. You know, for a $20 game that is sort of indie and you're not really sure about it, it, it can be a scary purchase for somebody without a lot of money to spend. A lot that. of the games I haven't tried is because their price tag is a little too high without me getting a taste. Mm-hmm. And you watch, and especially the games where there's not even really gameplay videos, I hate that. Yeah. Where it's like, how does this, how does this game play? And you're like, oh, I can't find out. You know, I'm watching the video, but it's all freaking pre-rendered. And you're like, okay, I can't buy this. I'm not going to give you forty bucks. Go back, you go back up to that image. Uh, show, show that image real quick uh, for the game. The only thing that gets me is looking at this. Do those little spider things remind you of uh, of of? Oh yeah, they of look Zelda. Like, yeah, they look like one of the creatures from Zelda. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's okay. The game's free. <laughs> But yeah, had a, had a, it gave me some uh, flashbacks to Zelda when I saw that. But 
other than that, I mean, it's cool. I'll, I'm actually. I assure uh, you that the most troubling thing about the developer Shota Bubba Hitsi is not that it looks kind of like Zelda <laughs> with Danger Gazers. You know, it's what I mean, happens if you don't put uh, what is it? The little, the little italics in front and back, so it only looks up the whole word. That's what's where things go south. Hey man, you know it's the just internet. look up Bobo Kidsy. Don't. That's the only part you need yeah. to look up to find the company people. Are danger gazers? Yeah, danger gazers. Well, that actually, but well, definitely don't look up danger gazers plus Shona. That's really going to send you to the wrong oh, place. I don't oh. even know. That's going to get you on a list. <laughs> um, but oh. still cool that they put the game out for free and got proven that. Instead of the greedy, tricky tactics of trying to get people to give you money without showing them anything, that you can actually show content, let people try your game, mm-hmm. and get people to then support you. This does work. Yeah, I mean, they were even saying that some people who enjoyed the game um, actually went and donated uh, more money, you know, paid two or three times the amount of the game because they they thought it was a a cool tactic. Well, you here's know. what's great about um, Game Pass. I found because Game Pass uh, did this where I almost went and bought Moonlighters. I was considering it because it gave me the base game on my Game Pass, right? Mm-hmm. But there's DLC out. But to get the DLC, you need the game. And I was considering buying the games in DLC because I enjoyed the game, but it ended up being a little shorter that I liked to purchase. Mm-hmm. But the point is that I have played games on Game Pass. And they have influenced me to put money. For example, I bought a actual season, one of the season passes for yeah. Gears of War 5. I bought uh, the last one and uh, I, because I said, I got the game for effectively a buck. You know what I'm saying? It's really fun. I don't mind throwing them some money. Yeah. So you can get money out of this. Well, I mean, sort of like Path of Exile. Path of Exile is a free-to-play Diablo-type game. And uh, it's, there's there's tons of microtransactions, but none of it's pay to win. It's all just cosmetic. Mm-hmm. The closest thing to pay to win is uh, extra extra stash space, um, but still not really a, a, mm-hmm. a high thing. And I've I've put money into the game for cosmetics here and there because I want the game to continue and I enjoy the game, and they're not forcing me to pay like constantly over and over um yep so he's talking about gears of war 5 but uh yeah so i mean this tactic can work because i mean i've thrown 20 dollars at gears of war and it wouldn't have got because here's the thing you know why i spent 20 dollars though too is because what was in that pass was what i wanted i actually didn't like the base game that much i didn't like the original characters that much but they put out a character i liked and they got my money but Mm -hmm. guess what if i had to buy the base game I just would have never gotten, they would have never gotten any money from me. But because they added a character I liked, I paid for that character, and they got money. So sometimes, some money's better than none. Yeah. Because yeah. when we were literally looking at the equivalent well, of, I mean, you yeah. either get $20 for Q or you get nothing. You're, so you're it playing it. Hurt. You're playing it on the Game Pass. They're getting money anyway because they're getting money True. through the Game Pass. But I, that's why, why I'm also saying because I want more games to come on the Game Pass because I like the Game Pass a yeah. lot. Yeah. Uh, because it lets me spend my money where I want to if I want to add something to a game. Yeah, sadly, games like Outer Worlds probably don't really work as well on the Game Pass because uh, there's not that that uh, continuous well, considering play. that the expansions are supposed to be free, too. I think you said they're supposed to be adding to it for free. Yeah. Yeah, but here's the thing. I'm pretty sure the portion of money you get is based on how many play hours you get. So if people are playing out of worlds, it's getting money. Yeah, but you are right that uh, that a lot of, that it's not going to get a lot of continuous play hours. Most people are going to beat it. And they're not going to touch it until the DLC yeah. comes out. I mean, if it, it, uh, games that are our, uh, your shooters and stuff that you have forgot, they got that epic money, they're fine. Well, that's true. They did. They that. did get that epic money. They so. did that. So they probably don't care. They're like, man, Epic paid for everything. Now we're just letting people enjoy our game. In fact, I kind of like to put out a game pass because it's a great fu to Epic. <laughs> oh yeah, pay us a bunch of money so that it's exclusive to you. Hey guys, spend a dollar over on Xbox and we'll let you play it. And I was like, oh, that was kind. Of, I actually kind of started liking them after that because I was like, they screwed Epic over. Because that's not exclusive. You know how unexclusive being a stream game is. That's well, the least exclusive that's thing that's else. because Epic is all about a uh, uh, sh- Steam, yeah. and uh, Steam and not I about. No, uh, they like an angry ex-wife or something. Uh, man. Yeah. They, they don't give a crap, but they got to burn down their house as long as it's your house too, <laughs> and you both don't have a house. Like yeah. Epic does not care. But anyway, let's uh, let's uh, let's end this up. Uh, 
once again, thanks, thanks, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, uh, Blood Axes uh, actually started a Dice Junkies uh, channel on Xbox Live. So uh, if you if, if you want to check that out, if you want to join us for when we get on uh, gears and stuff like that on um, on Xbox, uh, you can check that out. Just uh, I guess you can let's see, hit up Gamer ID Mister Blood Axe. Uh, There's a good chance you might catch Q on there. And boy, yeah, do I yeah, talk yeah. Shit. Q Q's been on there a good bit talking talking smack. Uh, I'm not as big into the Gears of War. Maybe there'll be another game that comes out though that I'll I'll get more into yeah, and be Doom's on there. Multiplayer, man. I'll get on there and show you how it's done. Um, yeah, put, Doom, I'll Doom, put that Doom, Doom fist on you. Wait, Doom probably won't be on uh on a, on the one. Xbox thing, but who knows? Hey, we'll hey, see. Man, hope, keep hope alive. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to check us out on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, all that good stuff. Facebook. Um, you can, you can support us on Patreon. We have a website. It's DiceJunkies.com. There's links to all the places we can be found online there. And uh, so you can check that out. Dice Junkies. I updated on occasion. I, I, I actually hadn't been updated as much as I'd like. The the, the the site screwed up, so I spent I spent like a week trying to get it up. Uh, Blood Axe was, was good enough to tell me that the site was down. I had a uh, bunch of my, my, my scripts that I've been having problems with, apparently. Um were partially because I was having issues on the uh, on the back end of the of the web server. You know what I'm saying to me, man? I've got you. Like, well, no. So, so I, forgive you. I got a lot of that <laughs> fixed, so it should be getting more updated. But the big thing is, is all the links there are for uh, for all of our external locations where we do tend to post. Like I know we we post uh, semi frequently on Instagram. Uh, well, definitely every time we go on a trip. Like, yeah, we're, we'll be traveling again soon, and when we do, y'all will see Instagram picks for it. Yeah, Instagram definitely picks up whenever we're at a con and stuff like that. I think we're gonna try to make. Or it. we get invited to an awesome New Year's party. Yeah. Um, also on Instagram and Facebook uh, is where we we'll usually post when we're about to head out to a con. So if you want to catch us at a con. Uh, that's that's a good place to find those. We usually have some T-shirts with us too. So if you if you Swag do catch point. us at a con uh, and you want a T-shirt, let us know. If we have one in your size, we'll definitely hook you up. Support your local comic you know. book store, people. Keep them open. Yeah, support your local comic book store. We, we do. A, we do. Disney's going to ruin the cinematic. You're going to be back to the comics bag, and you better keep them open. Yeah. Because when Disney gets done with the movies. All right, I'm going to quit <laughs> all this rambling. Thanks, guys, for watching. Like I said, be sure to check us out. And uh, you know, we do this show every week on uh, every Sunday at 3:30 live. So be sure to check that out. Take it easy. Have a good one. We hope you enjoy. It.